flowing from the temple Blood and water flowing from his open side Bringing us the life of God and his salvation And the people sang in joyful praise Hallelujah, hallelujah We are sons and daughters of the resurrection Hallelujah is the song we sing with joy On the praises we proclaim God to God and Jesus sing For His cross He has become a great amen I saw living water flowing from the temple God of water flowing from His open side Bringing us the life of God and His salvation In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. A hearty welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to this Eucharist uh, on today, the, the 12th of August. We are approaching Independence Day. Sisters, welcome. Fathers, welcome. Families, welcome. Uh, Let's pre prepare ourselves now to receive Jesus, putting ourselves in his presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. So all together, I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you sit for the readings? A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as for you, command the priest who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing before you into the Jordan. And when the soles of the feet of the priest bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priest bearing the ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. The waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city 
that is besides Zerathan, and those flowing down towards the sea of the Araba, the Salt Sea, were completely cut off. And the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from foreign people, Judah became his temple, Israel became his domain. Our response, Alleluia. The sea beheld them and fled. The Jordan turned back on its course. The mountains leapt like rams and the hills like yearling sheep. Our response, Alleluia. Why was it see that you fled, that you turned back Jordan on your course? O mountains that you leapt like rams, O hills like yearling sheep. Our response, Alleluia. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your face shine forth on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. Since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children, all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. Out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down, pleaded with him, Have patience with me, I will pay you. He refused, went and put him in prison, until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Now when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, the readings of the Mass are God's word to us, also have the presence of God. And the first reading is from the book of Joshua. Joshua means God saves, or may God save. I do possible interpretations. 
And we were reading, as you know, all these days, last few weeks, months, the, from the Old Testament, the first five books. And now we come to the sixth book in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. This book is a little bit of the history, they call them historical books. Uh, they call uh, Deuteronomistic history. That's what the scholars call it now because it's like continuation of what was there in Deuteronomy coming on ahead. Joshua was the successor of Moses and therefore he led the people. In today's narration, we have the account of the chosen people entering uh, the Holy Land, the Promised Land, where they were supposed to be, where God had promised over them. And uh, we hear the whole narration. Uh, we will read this book of Joshua just for a few days before we go ahead to the next book uh, on Monday already. Uh, so this is very briefly. But Joshua, uh, the book of Joshua is interesting. Uh, it's, he is a young person given charge of the Jewish people, told to lead them. And we said how they came. The river Jordan was really the boundary. And once they crossed Jordan, then they were going to come into the promised land. Even now, the river Jordan is there where John is baptized. When you, when you cross it, uh, you are in uh, the Holy Land in Israel. Now, uh, one of the things, Joshua is, was like a young man, studied the word of God, tried to fulfill it. And in many youth movements, the book of Joshua is often uh, sometimes spoken of and uh, discussed of how he always wanted to do what God wanted. It was to move as a young person, leadership position, taking the people, leading them on to the promised land, doing what God wants with confidence. Uh, we read a lot of things of the difficulties, they were frightened, but God was with them, and therefore he succeeded in conquering the uh, promised land. And today's reading was about them entering. The gospel passage from St. Matthew, we continue, is about forgiveness. And we know that this is the essence of Jesus, forgiveness, mercy, compassion. In a way, we must be grateful to Peter. Peter was very impetuous, and he would uh, just immediately answer Jesus. When it, Jesus, he suddenly comes to Jesus, how often uh, can, must I forgive? There must be some reason, some context, where something must have happened, and he must have been angry. And he wanted to show Jesus, he had learned from Jesus that you must forgive. He had, he had preached and, and he had done it so many times. Now, uh, I thought he, I think Peter thought that he's a very uh, generous man. Uh, the law, the Jewish law had said you must forgive three times. So, uh, Peter now was asked, how long, how often must I forgive? And he doesn't say three, he wants to show that he's very generous. Not even, he says double three, six, plus he adds one more for uh, for good measure. He says, uh, now can I, I, seven times. He thought that Jesus would say, yes, you're a very, very clever person, very wise person, very good person. Jesus, uh, because of him, now we have Jesus saying, not seven times, that's enough, my friend. Seventy times seven. The word used in Hebrew, Aramaic, could be seventy-seven or seventy times seven, two possible. But it means that there's, there's no measure, you just forgive. And then the, we hear that story, the touching story of how uh, we have, uh, the servant is forgiven by the king, but he doesn't forgive his fellow servant for a very small thing. And we, therefore, at this moment, when we uh, think and we, we are growing in holiness, we try to grow in holiness, think of ourselves, of how much God has forgiven us. moment for us to think of how God tolerates everything we do, our selfishnesses, our weaknesses, our pride, uh, and everything, like our lack of concern for others. And still he blesses us, still he uh, supports us, still he's with us, like as he is with the chosen people, in spite of everything we do. And we are so insensitive, intolerant. Let us try to, uh, at today at least, see, is there any, any anger, any uh, resentment, something I've not forgiven in your heart? Uh, I, I don't think you go and fight with people, but in your heart, Take away that resentment and thinking of how much God is, wants us to be that way, how much Jesus has forgiven us, how he died for us. God bless each one of you.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. When the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity, who humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness of this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you. Without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be questioned in our life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. With the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, at your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. Stop the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, should enter into my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May the communion in Your Sacrament that we have consumed Save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. If we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master said it, let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a lovely evening, lovely rest of the week that's coming. Uh, today is Thursday. And uh, last week we had a Solidarity Day, Justice Day, for pray for Stan Swami. So this evening in the catechesis, uh, you'll have an exposition of the service that we had right here, Bishop Savio and myself, for Stan Swami. It, may, it will make us to reflect also on justice and our own need to work for the poor, the people who are downtrodden. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's worth watching and worth participating in. Do do, do join us. Tomorrow again, as, as Friday, we'll have a, a one of one, again a young priest, Father Savio Lobo, assistant at Four Bungalows, uh, the Good Shepherd Church, and uh, he'll say the mass, lead us in prayer, and give an inspiring homily. 
God bless you. Happy viewing. I'll see you on Saturday. Keep well. God bless. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.